Hello. Oh, a character. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it is <laughs> episode 24. Wow. Of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. There's one episode for every hour of your day. Yep. And, and but longer than your day. If you do right. the minutes of our show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a long weekend. It was a very long weekend, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I want to start by saying how insane uh, people who post on Billy Joel fan sites are. <laughs> <laughs> they would have to be. Oh, so there was one that I read this week where somebody posited a, a question you've actually asked, which is, um, people who cover Billy Joel songs, are there, is there somebody who has sung a Billy Joel song and you like their version better? Ah. And of course, Shameless was, we've talked about that. Shameless, Mark maybe. Brooks. And, uh, but one person said, you know, I don't mind when they do covers, but nobody quite has his voice. And there's like a lot of song. And then they said a lot of people like the Beatles were good writers of songs, but they didn't have the nice vocal quality. And I was like, are you trolling me? <laughs> wow. I mean, some better than others in that band, but a pretty good vocal quality. <laughs> But, and also, you're saying Billy Joel's better than those. Yeah, oh, no. That, what a terrible thing to say. That's weird, right? That's weird, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I you don't necessarily think it's a good voice, but if you like him a lot, that's the voice you want to hear. And you're right. like, oh, he's a good voice, but it's not, objectively, um, if you can do that objectively. He doesn't have a pretty voice. I don't even mind people who think he does because, again, you like him and then and you like the music because I like the music. And again, I want to hear him singing it. I don't want to hear the, um, you know, the chipmunk version. I, I, uh, <laughs> I uh, which exists again. I, I must remind all of you to look up chipmunk punk. It's a hilarious album. <laughs> um. But it's weird to think he's got a better voice than, than the, I guess Paul McCartney, or John, or, or John. Uh, maybe the, I mean you could argue John's voice isn't amazing, but pretty good. Yeah, and John's well, voice. Was, than Ringo, he has a better voice than Ringo. Yeah, the other I'm thing gonna... is when John is singing a song where he's rocking, he rocks. Yes, that's true. He can rock. And. Billy Joel, Joel can't <laughs> quite, yeah. And Joel, it was just uh, weird. Billy Joel's that rock that you hide your key in. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah Billy rock. Rock. He's a hide a key, yeah. Yeah. And then another person posted, and again, they're on a Billy Joel fan site. So <laughs> these are all Billy Joel fans who know Billy Joel music. Um, and they, they posted, they said, I don't know if there's been an announcement. Does anybody know when Billy Joel's new album is coming out? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, well, the answer is we all know. We do yeah, know. We all know. I mean, we know what he has told us. And we have to take him at his word. Yeah, and he's been consistent since the announcement. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long, it's a good streak. <laughs> uh, 30 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, compilations and stuff. Yeah. Anyway, um, there is one really good cover that I don't know if we talked about. Oh. Uh, Dolly Parton covered uh, Travel and Prayer. Oh, okay. And it's, um, of course, she <laughs> has real bluegrass musicians. <laughs> um, and it is amazing it's really really good i'm writing that down oh and that's she, awesome I, I think we already know she has a better voice than he does <laughs> um but you know what he the thing of, that would make you think he has a great voice is that he's a one-man shop so he writes the songs they're very him so of course he has the perfect voice for every song he sings 
Yeah, true. So, you know, it, you're like, oh, this, this voice really goes with this song. I'm like, yeah, they all came out of the same place. <laughs> yeah. That's why <laughs> somebody, somebody didn't write this and then hand it to him on a train. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I also think it's weird when you do things like that anyway. Like, it happens. I like basketball. Do you like basketball? I do. I don't watch it as much as I should. As you should. And the Knicks are now good, by the way. They might even the be worth good watching. and the Nets are good. Yeah, so there's something to actually watch. The Knicks have been bad for so long that I, not a Knicks fan, am, am actually like, oh, good. Okay. I'm happy. Because <laughs> they've been bad long enough that even if you didn't like the Knicks, you're like, yeah, but this isn't fair. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you do that all the time. You cheer for teams in other cities. It's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Chicago, the Cubs. The 76ers, I always hope they uh, get good. Just because I liked Dr. J, and I'm like, man, it's been a long time since anyone gave a shit about them. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, I feel the same about, like, the Cleveland Browns of last season. I was like, oh, the playoffs. Oh, my God. Yeah, exactly. For them. It's good for people to remember they had a team. That's yeah. a lot of times what I think. Um, <laughs> but like when you do a thing where you take two singers and you're like, this person's objectively better, which of course is, unless it's like Pavarotti definitely has a better voice than Billy Joel. If you do that, that's fine. You can right. do that. But mostly if it's pop singers, to me, it's a lot like when they're like, who's the greatest basketball player of all time? And you're like, God. I'm not drunk. We're not at a bar, and I don't want to argue with you right now. Um, I got tangled up in that exact argument at the office on Thursday. <laughs> and <laughs> I played the role of the guy who points out what a stupid argument it is. Good. Uh, and it turns out that nobody likes that guy either. <laughs> <laughs> it's like LeBron versus Jordan. It's like, you can't compare them. Stop it. You know, I have my new go-to answer because I, so ask me who's better, LeBron or- hey, Who's better, uh, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? Uh, great question, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> that is a good answer. And I'm right, because statistically uh, he's better than both of them. Yeah, I mean, Oscar Robertson is pretty much, is pretty close. Yeah, uh, Wilt, how about Wilt? How about Wilt? Yeah. How about Steph Curry? Oh, Steph is pretty great. I mean, uh, it's still early for him, but uh, he's Steve, inches taller. Steve Kerr pointed something out, and then we'll close our NBA se section of the show. <laughs> Steve <laughs> Kerr pointed out something, that, and he said it as a coach that made me think St Steph Curry is one of the best ever in a particular way, but in sure. a way, because you can't compare eras, he does come up short in that. Steve Kerr pointed out, he said, modern in modern basketball playing, people just don't box out. And he was making a point that in the modern game, a lot of the fundamentals, in his opinion, suffer. Yes. And I, and I think that's a valid thing. Come, and because it comes from him and not from me at a bar. <laughs> right. Yes. A true expert. Yeah. yeah. But of course, as wiser men than me have said, it's, it's a fool's game to compare eras anyway. Yeah, I agree. Just, yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that part. But uh, <laughs> that's where we'll get all the comments on. Yeah. <laughs> Alex picked uh, Pressure, which is a, a great song that I obviously like and have referenced many times before. And then I had anxiety this week because I was like, because <laughs> Alex said, uh, I don't think we've done this song. Have we done this song? I was like, oh, no, we haven't done this song. I was like, oh, crap, maybe we have done this song. So I went through all our episodes just to make sure. And not that that's such a hard thing. And then I was like, damn, I labeled some of these stupid. So I fixed that, too. <laughs> you really did. Because uh, I did the same thing. And I was like, I think I know what song this means. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not really wow. sure. Wow, I'm not good at it. It's gotten better. Be, I think because the first couple episodes, I was like, well, I hope we do a lot of these. We'll just see what happens. Now there's 24 of these fuckers. And I'm like, oh, okay. I have to keep track of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
it would you, you didn't want to like uh, put too much faith in the idea by creating a tracking system early. Yeah, because then you you put a, a curse on it. Yeah, exactly. And now yeah. I'm keeping the faith. Because if you prepare for stuff, it doesn't happen. Yeah, See, that's why I call the that? doctor all the time. You huh? know what I said though, right? Because now I'm keeping the faith. Ah, we'll get to that one. <laughs> we will. We have to <laughs> so that my buddy has to watch it. <laughs> oh right, that's right. Uh, so you pressure. Pick, you pick pressure, which is uh, a wonderful song, I think. Yeah, it was a hit. Yeah. And it which was, is kind of why I picked it. I feel like we got away from hits for a while. Yeah, that's true. We'll do, we're doing two hits in a row now, that's for sure, which is God, right. awesome. Uh, but the one I picked is not a hit, so it'll be good. We'll get back. Um, uh, <laughs> get back it's another song that um, kind of gets right to it, is nice. Yeah. It, uh, it starts out, and, and there's not a lot of waiting around to see what happens. Uh, or waiting for the lyrics to start or there's no big you know introduction part it just we're right in this fucker and uh i like that i like that a lot the video as a reminder to folks is him in an apartment uh flooding and drowning yeah and it's, it's sinking into a shag carpet yeah <laughs> it, it's really great you should look up the video if you uh, um, uh i'll link to it actually i'll link to it but you should see this video because it's it's uh, batshit insane, but it fits the lyrics. It's a good version of of '80s MTV videos. And I think you can see watching it, you can see him hating the idea of having to make videos. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think he hated it, <laughs> and it, yeah, it really <laughs> comes across. I think the one time he probably enjoyed a video was for sure tell her about it because he gets to fantasize about being on the Ed Sullivan show. Yes. And he gets to dance with his uh, giraffe wife. Yes, <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> make her look even taller. <laughs> so why don't you start us out? Okay, lots of keyboards. Very electronic. Yeah. You have to learn to pace yourself. Pressure. <laughs> You're just like everybody else. Pressure. You've only had to run so far so good. I'll stop there. I like that. You've only had to run so far so good. I like that a lot. It's a good use of that phrase, don't you think? Do you think he means so well? <laughs> or because i i think it's uh he's he's using the phrase so far so good oh yeah and that's why i like it you've only had to run so far so, so good. good um yep. so that it's it's a i don't know not a double i don't know what it is but it's <laughs> what's that called uh <laughs> uh let's say wordplay yeah we'll say it's wordplay yeah i like that you've only had to run so far so good so far so good i like that all right i like that too who's he talking to I, he's again acting superior to someone yeah i think he's talking to himself i think this is an inner hype job That's okay are you being influenced by the video <laughs> uh, or maybe but um i've had these kinds of conversations with myself you know yeah not literally in the mirror but i've I've had them you got this kind of conversation and uh and disagreed actively and like no i don't no no you got this <laughs> you know <laughs> well i mean it it would track yeah um but yeah, apparently this person is about to encounter some sort of pressure. Yeah. So he's either talking himself up or kind of like <laughs> insulting someone. Yeah. Hey, you're not going to be able to handle what's coming your way, bud. <laughs> um, so it could be, yeah, it could be a little of both. There's definitely a little bit, you're right, of some older manisms of like, you're not ready. Life is. I always think it's funny too when older folks tell younger folks, you know, life isn't isn't all peaches and cream. As if 
young people are just enjoying every second. Yeah. We, well, we, I think we tend to think that because they're uh, young and they look good and they're yeah. happier. So we're like, oh, they think life is easy. It's like, no, no. Uh -uh. They just aren't gray yet. Yeah. And they're hydrated. Yeah. And they're enjoying <laughs> this second. Yeah. Yeah. But they're also they're real bummed out too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just talk to any one of them for 10 minutes. <laughs> yes. See where they actually are. <laughs> I, uh, I was hanging out with a younger comic and he was in his 20s. You know, I, at the time I was in my 40s. I am no longer in my 40s. Um, but he was in his 20s and we were driving to a, a mic. And I was thinking about this person who was no longer in my life. And I just started crying in the car. And we had just <laughs> met. We just oh, met. Jim. And I ended up doing stand-up about it, ridiculing myself. And he said to me later, he goes, you're in my car, we're driving. And I already <laughs> thought you were a funny dude. And then you started crying. And I thought, oh, this is a guy I could be friends with. <laughs> <laughs> He's a bit of a, a open wound himself. Ah. <laughs> Very so I picked the right car. <laughs> that could have gone really tits up on you. Oh, and should have, should have. I Probably mean, should have. Lord, <laughs> Lord he, was, he's, he was very nice. And obviously, you know, he's, he, uh, he has an interesting, has had an interesting life. You think young people haven't suffered. He has kind of Arabic looks. Okay. But he's a white guy. It just, he just happened to catch all the genes one way so he looks very different from his siblings oh. um but you can see the origins of it in like mom and dad it's just it all packaged together to create <laughs> young muslim oh. and he has vivid memories vivid memories of going to school on 9 10 oh, and 9 12 oh, yeah. and things changed pretty drastically for him uh, wow yeah <laughs> yeah so er everybody's struggling yep and i think that's the point as we get back to the lyrics but yeah <laughs> all right i'll get back in but you will come to a place where the only thing you feel are loaded guns in your face <laughs> and you'll have to deal with pressure wow this is very heavy for him um yeah I'm not used to, I mean, there's a lot of like disdain in his stuff, but I don't remember a loaded gun in anyone's face. That's yeah. a heavy material for Billy Joel. Um, That's and funny. now I'm thinking like, I want to, I want this song to be about him dealing with having to make videos for MTV. <laughs> That's the pressure he feels. <laughs> uh you know, and it, it very well could be something like that for sure, because loaded guns in your face is such a strong bit of imagery. It very much could be pressure from the music industry and pressure from his publisher. And I got to make this damn video. And I mean, he uh, talks a lot about having been sort of a like a ugly little kid who learned the piano to get girls. And it was working great and he was making albums and he was touring and then somebody was like hey we're, there's gonna be a camera in your face now <laughs> now everyone's gonna see you when they hear your songs and i think he might if he had the self-esteem issues might have been like oh no oh my yeah whole, my whole plan <laughs> ruined yeah. my whole plan's been ruined <laughs> that's how they say it out there ruined yeah. Um, Hi. Well, I will say if Billy Joel were to ever listen to this, you turned out to be a perfectly fine looking fella. Ain't nothing you're a great wrong with gentleman, you. and you're doing fine with the ladies. Yeah, that's for sure. Man. <laughs> Not so much with the accountant, but you did great oh, with the ladies. Oh, you can't hire. You, did he hire accountants by their looks as well? Because that's <laughs> not their plan. He did hire them by at some points based on their relation to good-looking ladies he knew. So, um, 
if you you frequently go to restaurants in Los Angeles, I'm sure. Yeah. And service is largely terrible. <laughs> and the reason is that they hire servers on looks. And most places hire them on how much they know about serving and food and <laughs> how fast they can walk and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, I remember applying for waiting jobs in LA and they would always take a picture of you. Oh, wow. Uh, after your interview. And then you know that some manager back there was just like, no, 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 looking at the pictures and not the resumes. And we go like this girl. And then uh, you wait 45 minutes for your risotto. That's... And then you're like, oh, I'm not that mad though. Cause look how pretty. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. I did. I did not know that. Every restaurant, they would like take a Polaroid and they would flap it around and be like, "All right, someone will call you." Wow. Yeah. I got hired at a restaurant once, and there's no way they did that. <laughs> so yeah, but also I wasn't good at it too. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the double threat. Yeah, it was. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What is, is opposite of a double thread is a is a is a double nothing. I should be nothing. You were non-threatening. Yeah. Wow. Not only is he not good looking, but also he's slow. This is perfect. Ah. <laughs> uh, all right. I like this. I do really like this song. You. I think it is a little bit of a. He's talking to somebody, but he's also definitely mulling the pressure he's under yeah you used to call me paranoid pressure mm -hmm. but even you cannot avoid pressure you turned the tap dance into your crusade wow i like that i don't know what that means but i like it yeah um i feel like what it means is you turned the um the, so the tap dance, right, is the, the tap dance, we're all doing the tap dance, like you're doing the tap dance of like, you know, being, you know, keeping those relationships within the writing world alive and going <laughs> in and writing when you don't writing jokes when you don't feel like doing it and going out for cocktails, even if you don't feel like doing it, that's the tap dance, right, that we all do yeah. some version of it, like talking to a booker or whatever, we're all doing that. And then turning it into your crusade, this is, he, he's, I think it seems accusatory. Like you're, you're just doing the same tap dance you are that you're doing the same tap dance. We're all doing it, but you think it means something. Oh, interesting. Is that and a good, read? I think that's, a I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, and in, and it, just be a tap dance. Huh? Exactly. You're, you think this is meaningful. You're just trying to get by just like me. Now, here you are with your faith. Actually, it fits the next set of lyrics pretty well. And your Peter Pan advice. Mm -hmm. You have no scars on your face and you cannot handle pressure. So he's also saying that this person's had it a little too easy. A little too easy. Um, I like <laughs> the phrase Peter Pan advice. Uh, that probably won't make sense to younger people, but that used to be a thing that every every dad would yell at you that something was Peter Pan. Um, or that was Peter Pan advice. And it was like, pablum. Yeah. Uh, it was like uh, surfacey advice that wasn't helpful in any real way. Yeah. What was uh, Peter in Peter Pan? His advice was like... It was literally, think like, happy thoughts. <laughs> right. Yeah, follow that star or something. Yeah, follow that star to the left or something, which is terrible directions too. Terrible directions and bad advice. Yeah, ignoring the fact that depending upon where you are and where the light is in relation to you, Peter Pan does not understand how the sky works. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you're in space, there's not even, there isn't a left. Right. Yeah. Correct. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, they were standing on earth, so maybe, but still. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Peter Pan advice. Uh, you have no scars on your face, which is a weird accusation. Yeah. Because I would say 
98% of people don't have scars on their face. Yeah. I um, have a couple. Yeah, I see. I can see one right now. I'm about to yeah, happen. This guy, yeah. That's a future scar. I have a good one under here that you can never really see because it happened right in the crease, almost perfect for a place right. to get cut. I have one um, under here, but I grew a beard. Now, is it really prominent if you shave the beard where you're like, oh, damn, that's it, a scar? No, you can see it, but I wouldn't say prominent. Yeah. Yeah, I like scars, and uh, I uh, my hands are, if you can see these ugly mitts, mm -hmm. they're all scars, and I look at them, and I like them, because they remind me that I've done stuff. So I, I guess I agree with yeah. Billy Joel. <laughs> it sounds that way, and you, uh, you might be able to handle pressure. Yeah, I can handle some pressure, that's for sure. Um, if you listen to this song, I really enjoyed the the fucking disdain he puts on the word faith. <laughs> it's really great. I thought he was saying face for the longest time, <laughs> which is a weird thing to say to somebody. Now here you are with your face. <laughs> That's wonderful. But there really is a lot of bile on that word. Yeah, he's... This song had to be written with someone so specific in mind. Yeah, he's still mad in the studio. Yeah. About whatever happened here. And that's great when songs come like that because it feels, you know, we've talked about certain songs that he has that it feels like the movie, you know, he watched a movie and that's how they, it happened in the movie. <laughs> right, right. This is definitely someone who... Uh, Probably somebody who, you know what I bet too. So you, you have no scars on your face and here you are with your Peter Pan advice. He probably was having a conversation with somebody and he was venting. Uh huh. And he was doing that thing you do with a friend, which is you're like, Lord, I have to, I have to fly to LA and I have to do this damn video and man, I'm fat. And <laughs> and I just want to do the song and I I mean my last album did fine and I didn't have videos or whatever and the person probably said well you know what make the most of it you get to take a vacation to LA or whatever they said and he thought fuck you can I just read you something <laughs> yeah I, we've talked about it now enough that I was like let me look up Wikipedia and see what he says it's about okay um at the time, I was saying, well, I got to write some more stuff for the album. I was about halfway through and I said, well, what am I going to do? I don't have any ideas. It's gone. It's dead. I have nothing. And then the woman who is my secretary came into my house at that point and said, wow, you look like you're under a lot of pressure. I bet that'd be a good idea for a song. And I went, thank you. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> wow. Uh, so it is about him, I guess. It is about pressure. He was feeling, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's. Well, he does say earlier in that piece that uh, he was thinking about how early in his career, the pressure was, I don't have any money or a place to live and I'm hungry. And then later in his career, the pressure was like, oh, I can't think of a song idea. And so he was, I think he's yelling at his current fat self. Oh, okay. Uh, for thinking that pressure was that when, when he was younger, he was experiencing actual pressure. Right. I think he was feeling fat and spoiled and mad at himself for it. That's funny. Which sounds uh, about right. <laughs> well, oh, wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I never heard that that story because I like my story better. But <laughs> <laughs> that's I mean, great. aren't they all true in some way? Oh. <laughs> and, and, all right. Now the next part, which you'll read those lyrics, is the thing where the song changes how the song works. Yeah. But I love this one. Yeah. This one does it really well, where we change. Uh, the bridge is musically very different, but it's really cool. It makes me think it's all synthesizers, no piano in this one, right? Yeah. All keyboards. 
uh, very early 80s. Yeah. And it, sound, it made me think of uh, Gary Newman, uh, Cars. Oh, yeah. That song. That, this when like everybody got their brand new synthesizer at the same month. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody made an album with it, or at least a song. And he really went nuts with his. Yes. Um, and it's great. I mean, of course, you know, he's a brilliant pianist. Yeah. So when you give him a keyboard, you get something back for it. Yeah, absolutely. He knows, he knows how to operate it. And what he's doing singing wise is neat. It is a neat. little creepy. It's a little character. Yeah. It's a little bit like, oh, I'm a little bit British, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's like a soft spoken. It's weird. It's sinister. It's, it's obviously not his like raw voice. Yeah. It's sinister, right? It's sinister. It's threatening. Yeah. Um, but it's great. And he doesn't yeah. overdo it. Nope. He doesn't get too British where you're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. No, but he does say like cosmic rationale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all grown up and no place to go. Psych one, psych two, what do you know? All your life is channel 13. That's PBS here in New York. There, okay, I didn't know that. Sesame Street, what does it mean? I like it because it's all choppy sentence fragments. Yeah. Um, psych one, it's like a list, psych one, psych two, Sesame Street. Psych one, psych two is college stuff. He's talking I about assume, college. yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I... It is like more sources of bad advice. Like you took psych one and psych two and you watched Sesame Street and now you give Peter Pan advice. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all like, you are not smart enough to lecture me about pressure. Yeah. And, yeah, for sure. I like that part and I like I like how absolutely it is still just ridiculing whoever he's singing at if it's his younger self or if he's yelling at his older self he's a little of both directions it's it could sure. also be for sure a little bit of yeah I thought it was pressure back then but at least then I was free it could even be the other way cuz yeah you have no scars on your face you know you you know, you're going around thinking life is so tough, and then you're getting drunk at a bar and hanging out with young ladies, and no one cares. There's no <laughs> consequences for you doing that because you're just you're in your 20s. Expectations right. are dirt low. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, I sure. I now feel that. Huh? Now you can't make a mistake. Yeah, I feel that way about life now. I'm like, I'm doing pretty good now. You know, life is fine, and I'm like. Yeah, but now it doesn't seem like I could stop doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, now it's uh it's too late. Yeah, before Great I could, late, buddy. Yeah. I could yeah. just stop stuff. You I mean, can be I'll, late with rent, but you can't be late with a mortgage payment. Yeah. That's what I've learned. <laughs> yep. <Yeah, laughs> suddenly, yeah, suddenly you've got a little more money and a lot more, hey, I need your money. <laughs> <laughs> You have mo money and mo problems. <laughs> somebody, mm. somebody should make that into a thing. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> and then he, uh, but Sesame Street. Then he's very that? sinister. Huh? Then he gets very sinister. And he says to us, "I'll tell you what it means. <laughs> Pressure. The only <laughs> point of the song that gets." a little over the top, but the song's so wonderful, it's all right, is when he says, pressure. That's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a little rocky. It's, but yeah. the right, uh, but also that's only because we're analyzing Billy Joel lyrics and we need to think about it because in the context, it don't bother me at all. Right. It does feel like some producer was like, oh, you should yell it. Yeah. Make it, it'll be more intense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it gets me out of the studio. Yep. And then now we, uh, this next lyric is sad and great. 
Don't ask for help. You're all alone. Pressure. You'll have to answer to your own pressure. That's really cool because up till then, um, the word pressure is a thing that's implied in the background, but it's actually the direct completion of the thought. You'll have to answer to your own pressure. Yeah, it's part of the sentence. That's neat. I don't it, know if it's intentional. Also, he did that earlier too. Um, you but used to call me paranoid, but even you cannot avoid pressure. Oh, yeah. Yep, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a cool device. It's like background and then it becomes foreground. That's rad. Okay. I didn't th here yeah. and then it's pressure in front of you. I like it. And then he gets back into who this, whoever this numb nuts is who thinks they're so special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll have some cosmic rationale. And then, yes, he does rationale. <laughs> yeah. Here you are in the ninth, two men out and three men on. <laughs> that is a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure. And it's very funny to me that it, he just went with a baseball thing. <laughs> yeah. After the cosmic rationale. You know what, though? It, now, I don't know if he did it this way on purpose, but it's funny because he says, I'm sure you have some cosmic rationale, but here's what I, grounded person, think. Yeah. Baseball. Yeah. Here's a, my blue collar version of pressure that everyone listening to will understand. And we'll realize that you and your yoga and healthy <laughs> food and drinking water, whatever he's mad about. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably mad about water. <laughs> <laughs> but here you are in the ninth, two men out and three men on. Nowhere to look but inside. Right. Now, is that intentionally double meaning? Because it's got a double meaning, right? It does have a double meaning. I didn't even notice that, but I love it. I didn't until now either. So nowhere to look but inside. And then, of course, I think you're pitching. I think this guy's pitching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that situation, two men out and three men on is only and, pressure for the pitcher. And it's a lot of pressure for that guy. But in no, nowhere to look but inside. Wow. I literally just saw that now, and I'm delighted. I bet if you told him that you saw that, he'd go, oh, fuck, I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah. Um, There's like a 50% chance that he didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I'd love to have that conversation. Oh, oh. if Nowhere I see to... him. Huh? If I see him. Yeah. Nowhere to look but inside where we all respond to pressure. Um, I like that it's we all respond to it. <laughs> like It doesn't say like we all like rise to the occasion and defeat it. Yeah. Or we all succumb to it. It's just like we all, everybody responds to it. Yeah. Um, you, you may win or lose, um, but it's great. Yeah, there's an inevitability of you having to deal with this. You're going to respond one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, really great. And I do like this. <laughs> I'm going to listen to it after we're done because I want to hear that little British voice. <laughs> I think, you know, it wouldn't surprise me because it is the early 80s and everything coming out, it was the second British invasion. Yeah. It was, uh, a, what was it? English beat and Spandau Ballet and everything sounded like that sort of. <laughs> and I'm sure, he, I mean, he might be like me. Like I have a British friend and whenever I talk to her for more than five minutes, I start speaking with an accent. <laughs> and I do that to everybody. I just absorb whatever they're putting out. Yeah. And, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that happens to musicians. Like he probably hung, hang out, hangs out with Sting. Oh, for sure. They met on US, they were both on USA for Africa, right? Yes. I think they did that. Yeah. Sting was in all that stuff. No, he did all of them. Oh, yeah. Because he cared the most. Just try and keep him out. <laughs> <laughs> he cared the most. Oh, suck it, Bono. That's right. <laughs> <sighs> all right. All your life.
is Time Magazine. I read it too. What does it mean? I like he's putting this person on the spot. Like, okay, yeah, I read it too. So what? what? <laughs> um, it's a great example to use because that it's kind of a useless magazine <laughs> in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah, it's a it's a picture book for the news, you know, and it's yeah. So you read Time Magazine, you think you're smart, but you really just looked at a bunch of pictures. Yeah, mostly most people. And it collated a a lot of times. What they do is they take news and collate it into an article, right? And then and I'm sure sometimes have provided great value, but then they always Time Magazine was always the like. Here's a story about the Middle East. Also, this is what Jesus would really look like. <laughs> right. That's yeah. not a made up example, by the way. Time Magazine. No. Does that. Yeah, they do it a lot. All, Time and Newsweek. Yeah. Always like, could, they, could the Nora, the Jesus's star have been real? There was a <laughs> comet that same century. And you're like, oh, yeah. Fuck off. Here's what you do, by the way. I will read you Time Magazine if you tell me this is what Jesus would look like, but then there's another one. This is what he'd look like with a top hat. <laughs> Dumb, useless, nothing. Oh, I, I just think Jesus would look like uh, Jamie Farr. <laughs> he would. Jamie Farr. You're right. Sorry. And he also would have tried to get out of the war. Yeah. <laughs> conscientious objector right. i mean if, if he can't get conscientious objector yeah. who do you give it to <laughs> that's right i mean, now i'll also want to see all medieval art changed uh and jamie farr inserted <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, what does it mean pressure i'm sure you'll have some cosmic rationale but here you are with your faith and your Peter Pan advice. You have no scars on your face and you cannot handle pressure. I do like cannot. Oh, instead of can't, yeah, it's proper. Cannot. And it's, it's also Britishy. And it's this, it's he's pointing at you and going, you cannot, cannot handle pressure. <laughs> you cannot handle the truth. Yeah, that's pretty great. Um, and it's and a, you, uh, I'm sure, appreciate the way the song ends. Yeah, it has an ending. It has an ending. I like it. And that. it even has a countdown. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it has a definitive, we're done. And I would say, even before the ending, I really appreciate, I hadn't even thought about it, the one time he repeats uh, the an exact sentiment is at the end. He's, you know... Here you are with your faith and your Peter Pan advice. You have no scars on your face and you cannot handle pressure. And I've had arguments that went that way where you said a thing again. Look, I told you earlier. <laughs> and, you know. List. Yeah. You're, you're, you're running in circles around the point I was trying to make. So I'm bringing you fucking back. This is right. the thing I was trying to say. Your brother's an alcoholic. I don't want him in my house. If he's still here when I get back, we're divorced. And you cannot like handle pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one, two, three, four, pressure. <laughs> That's a, a weird, you don't usually get the count at the end. Yeah, that's true. One, two, three, four, pressure. Four, <laughs> four is the right amount. I will say that for some reason it is. I, I, you have those thoughts, right? You're like, why is it that, like a particular phrase, like I, I had a joke about, one time I had a joke about, um, I don't, I wouldn't commit suicide, not because I don't want to, but because I don't have the nerve. Um, and then the, the punchline was, um, my philosophy is that I want to die faster than alcoholism, but slower than rope. <laughs> and it always got a great laugh uh -huh. but if i i switched it out once for something other than rope and it didn't work at all yeah because uh yeah rope you have to put it together for yourself a second You're like rope. Yeah. Oh, yeah i see and i think it's that dumb thing or certain words i think rope 
kids <laughs> comedically just does. Yeah, it's a good funny word. And so for some reason, one, two, three wouldn't have been good. No. But one, well, two, three. Also wouldn't work with the beat, probably. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go, because it's a four count or something, and I'm being dumb. Yeah, <laughs> but it works. I always wonder about that, because it just works. One, two, three, four, pressure. It feels like it might have been a placeholder. Mm. And it was like, oh, I'll write words. And then it's like, oh, I can't find anything that fits. Fuck it. And one, two, three, four. Yeah. You know, that's how uh, the Phil Collins hit Sue Studio happened. I did not know. What? Tell me. He, I was fucking around in the studio with that music track and just was singing Sue Studio as a placeholder. And then they he like wrote real words that went in there and was like, oh, that doesn't sound as cool though. <laughs> and so finally he was just like, fuck it. It doesn't have to mean anything. It's fun to sing. Yeah. Sue Sue Studio. That's, that's weird and fantastic. It's funny to me that his nonsense word that he made up in the studio was Sue Studio. Because it, it was like, it's like George Glass. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's like, I'm in, where am I? In the, in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And I remember when that song came out, I liked the song. It was a perfectly nice yeah. song. And you probably went, I wonder what the fuck that means. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah, because who cares, really? It doesn't matter. There's so many songs. And I'll tell you, there ain't going to be a show where people analyze the Phil Collins lyrics, so it's not fine. It's fine. Yeah, no, that would be crazy. <laughs> it would be insane. You'd have to be fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, remember you remember when phil collins announced he was retired remember i don't <laughs> at some point he announced he was retired and then he announced he was coming out of retirement and i saw this on twitter or something and somebody was opining about how it was ridiculous that he was coming out of retirement and stay in retirement they said to phil collins <laughs> and i generally don't respond to people but i just I just responded. I said, why are you mad at Phil Collins? It's, it made no sense to me. Yeah. Did you get a satisfying answer? Um, I got a, nat a mumbly into nothing, like one or two responses okay. afterwards that was I found actually pretty satisfying. Oh, good. Because it made, because I wanted to know that I was right, that, well, you have no reason for feeling this way, right? And then I went, no. and they they showed me that they had no reason. That to was confirmed it. for you. Okay, good. Yeah, because yeah. I just didn't understand it. I understand some levels of anger, like sometimes. Here's here's an example. Sometimes people will take John Lennon to task online about uh -huh. how apparently he was a very bad boyfriend and he was a bad husband to his first wife and he could be violent. Apparently, okay. and what sure. I always say is, I go. You know, my understanding is that he was trying to be a better person before he got murdered. <laughs> because I don't understand why you're going after John Lennon. Yeah. I mean, the whole going after culture is a little baffling sometimes. I mean, some people obviously deserve it. Yeah. Um, and there should be some light shed on certain activities and behaviors. But yeah. also, not every... You know, a lot of people are very upset that Elon Musk is hosting SNL. Indeed. And I'm like, I don't like him. I think you know, a lot of what he does is bad. Um, I think he's kind of a dope. But, you know, they're like, oh, he is a Bitcoin or whatever, the Dodge coin, whatever coin he's in. And like, that's bad for the environment. Uh, and he's like a weird libertarian who likes Trump. I'm like, I, who, I don't care yeah he's that's not the job there yeah if anything he'll spend a week not hurting anybody because he'll be very busy uh trying on outfits and uh learning blocking the, and also the, every other host of snl has uh, been problematic in some way yeah you know you're very happy when someone comes on to promote their movie that glorifies gun violence no one complains. Yeah. 
And I don't like him either, but just shut up. The no, problem is that we don't have to grow our own crops anymore. Yeah. And so yeah. we have time. And when you give us time as humans, we use it against people. Because <laughs> uh, it makes us feel bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I want to express two thoughts on that. One is it ain't new fatty arbuckle, right? Sure. Yeah. But also, I don't mind. The only reason I don't like him hosting is because I know he's not funny. <laughs> yeah, he's going to stink. <laughs> That's what bothers me is yeah. like when Robert Blake hosted, we didn't know he was going to be hilarious later with his wife at a pizza place. <laughs> but, sure. but what was wrong with Robert Blake hosting wasn't what he might do in the future. It was how painfully unfunny he was. And there Absolutely. are, there are wonderful people in the world that I wouldn't want to see on that show. Like I think if you got Jimmy Carter on there now, it would be terrible. <laughs> uh, it would just be bad. Yeah, it would be bad. But you know, we have had hosts in the past. Some of the worst ones were like Olympic athletes. And you're like, oh, this is a, a great person who represented their country, did their very best, probably very clean living, aside from a little doping, who knows? Sure. But like they're young, fresh faced, all Americans, and they stunk. So you don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, no, yeah. Like, I was, you know, I have been asked to weigh in on that controversy. And I'm just like, it's, why is it a controversy? Yeah. It's so stupid. It isn't. But I bet you, I am not, I, am, I do not know, no Lauren Michaels. I've never had the pleasure to meet him. But I bet, because he's smart. He loves it when there's a nonsense controversy. Absolutely. This is just if good. It's not, if it's truly nonsense. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's good for press. It, it's going to be good for ratings, which is why he was booked in the first place. Yeah. And that's his job is to get people to watch that show. It's not his job to make it funny. Yeah. <laughs> he hires people for that. Yeah, that's right. He's like, I'll get people to watch it. You people make it funny and we'll all make money. Yep. Because because I think he's more or less done trying to do too many other things. I think it's SNL now. For a while, he tried to do lots and lots of other things. I mean, certainly his name is on a lot of shows. Yeah. His personal involvement level, I don't necessarily know. Yeah. I mean, he is an executive producer on our show and I haven't seen him in a year. Yeah. <laughs> is great as yeah. it should be. that's what executive means yeah it means he gets a check <laughs> yeah yeah it means he gets yeah. a check and you get a check great yeah yeah i think seth still gets a check right i think so yeah oh yeah well, he's still getting paid isn't he okay good yeah oh yeah yeah because i don't think it'd be fair if he wasn't <laughs> yeah that'd be weird <laughs> oh my god so not to put any pressure on you do you have some trivia for me? I do have one that I think is probably super easy, at least for you. Maybe not for our viewer. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, there's a Billy Joel song that I don't think was written for a movie soundtrack, but ended up on a movie soundtrack. The song is Modern Woman. What was the movie? Oh, wow. Okay. So there's... Modern Woman, huh? Modern Woman. Remember that song? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's not that easy a question. What was the movie? The movie was Ruthless People. Oh, okay. Ruthless People. That was a good movie. It was a good movie. Yeah, I'd kind of forgotten that movie existed. It's one of those movies. And his song is like in some weird, like, I feel like it was an aerobics sequence. <laughs> yeah, so that's showed up. Bette Midler, right? And she's out of shape and kind of homely in the beginning, and then right. she gets kidnapped, and her husband just pretty much is counting on the kidnappers killing her. Right, and then she gets like revenge, sexy, I think. Yeah, 
I think it's part. It's the revenge sexiness montage, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Oh my God. Have uh, you ever seen her in concert? No. She's great. No. She, I, no doubt. Hell of a show. And I watched her. I saw her and um, at the Staples Center. Had really good seats. And uh, at one point, she comes back. She leaves for a minute, and she comes back in a witch costume. And apparently. There's a whole brand new bunch of fans because of, I think the movie was called Hocus Pocus or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sarah Jessica Parker. And so there's a whole bunch of people who like her because of that. So she's <laughs> right. like, all right, I'll here, here, let me do this thing. Here you go. Here you go, hey, everybody. Come on. Come on, gather around. <laughs> she was on our show not too long ago talking okay. about that exact phenomenon. Oh, yeah, saying like there's a whole generation thinks that the only thing I ever did was hocus pocus. <laughs> like, great. And she's like, it's great. I mean, I love it. Yeah, because she's smart enough to know that, oh, this is also money I make. Yeah. And this is also career that I get to extend and continue to do things I like to do. Absolutely. And, you know, some percentage of people who saw that movie will find out about the rest of her career and enjoy that too. Yeah. Yeah, one of my favorite things she talked about was because, of course, she did the bathhouse shows early in her career, very right. famous. Um, and she would always say, she said at one point, in the bathhouse shows, there couldn't have been more than 50 or 60 people at any given show. And yet, somehow, mysteriously, I've met thousands of people who claim to have been there. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Yeah. Um, and you know who her pianist was for those bathhouse shows, right? I believe uh, he wrote the songs that made the young girls cry, right? He did. Yeah. yeah. God, why am I blanking on his stupid name? <laughs> <laughs> it's Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow, yeah. The great Barry Manilow. Yeah, Barry Manilow came out like two years ago or something, which it's I found great. funny. It's, my... it's funny when you like, <laughs> you do expect like, I'm out. And everybody's like, uh-huh. Right. And what else? <laughs> no, that's it. That's all the news. Oh. All right. Great. I hope at least one or two people were like, oh. Oh, I can't believe it. To just for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, oh, that kind of gay. <laughs> I thought you meant the synonym. <laughs> oh, that makes so much sense considering what I know of you. <laughs> All right, uh, so, so everybody probably got this. Uh, the stained glass curtain you're hiding behind? Why it never lets in the sun? Which is pretty accurate because you just a little sliver of sun there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very dark. Man, that's hard to do. Get your finger in the right. There we go. <laughs> yeah, only the good die young. Also a great song. I hated it when I was a kid because I was Catholic. And oh. I was very Catholic. And I was in deep and I believed all that stuff. And I heard that song and I was like, I was mad at him for that song. Really? Yeah. Uh, for a long time. That's funny. Um, I had to get over it. Now... Does that feel silly now or just like, oh, that's part of, it feels silly, right? It feels silly. Yeah. I mean, I'm not embarrassed about it because, you know, you people change and grow up and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. When I was in high school, I liked comic books. Unlike mm -hmm. now when I love comic books. Um, <laughs> when I was in high school, I liked comic books and I would collect Spider-Man and I would collect uh, Captain America. I would not read Thor oh and the reason I wouldn't read Thor very similar I was like it felt blasphemous to me because there's only one god oh and he was a Norse god and he's a Norse god huh. and now that I'm like well it's more like there aren't any so I can read Thor <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but what's funny too is there's plenty of Christian kids who are like oh yeah, yeah it's a comic book I can read that it's uh entertaining but it bothered me so i didn't read yeah. it I, I have the same thing 
Yeah. I think we were similarly high strung in as kids in ways that weren't healthy as yeah. far as being kids. I mean, I think I looked around at other Catholic kids and was mad at them all the time because they were doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, and so that part of me has not changed at all. <laughs> now I hang out with comedy writers all day and I get mad at them for doing it wrong. <laughs> that's, that's great. I'm just mad when people don't do things right. <laughs> yeah. So I'm mad all the time. Yeah. Yeah. People anyway. Are, yeah. <laughs> You might have heard I run with a dangerous crowd, he said. Um, I went ahead and picked a song from An Innocent Man. Picked a song That's, uh, you love to do that. Um, we we're eventually going to talk about all of them. Now, here's the funny thing. I don't remember listening to this song much at the time. Uh -huh. I re-listened to it. And I think this song is maybe the absolute closest on the album to getting its era uh, influence on the nose. I and think I know what you're gonna say. Careless talk. That's not what I thought you were gonna say. What did you think I was gonna say? I thought you were gonna say, leave a tender moment alone. Oh, that's a beautiful song. It's uh, him trying to be Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Careless talk. I like leave a tender moment alone. I, I feel, huh. Careless talk just it's got the this uh deep uh backup singer guy doing a bow bow thing mm -hmm. that is typical <laughs> of the era. Yeah. And, I, and in the very beginning, like um for the longest time doesn't quite work for me, just never has. Interesting. And I think I've told you I don't dislike the song, but mm -hmm. it took me a long time to put my finger on it, and it is that. I believe he's harmonizing with himself. He is. He does all the parts. And that's a mistake because that's not how they made those songs. Yeah. And that's not why they sounded so rich and deep. Yeah. It's because it's five different voices. Exactly. So that doesn't work for me because I don't think he's accomplishing what he set out to do. And I now that's my version of always being mad at people for doing it the wrong way. <laughs> like, like my judgment on movies, I, I say this about movies a lot, is I like it when a movie accomplishes its task, regardless of whether or not the movie is good or great. Yeah. And But as long as, oh, they wanted to do this thing and they did it. So like some comedies, for example, that are a little too schmaltzy, even if they're good, I I hold it a little, a little against them. Like I think Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is is meant to be funnier than it is and it's a funny movie it's a funny movie but i'm under the impression that it was supposed to just be a stone cold riot from beginning to end and it isn't quite and it went sentimental yeah yeah but then that's, again that always feels like studio interference to me yeah yeah I'm like oh it's got to have a heart yeah. it really not if it's a comedy nope Nope. Parenthood has almost the same amount of heart as planes, trains, and automobiles, but I think it's supposed to be there. <laughs> yes, yes. Because it's about a particular experience, and it is actually very sad because Jason Robard's uh, other son is probably going to get killed by the mob. Yes, the great Tom Hulse. The great Tom Hulse. And that, <laughs> that film, to me, I'm like, nails it. Yeah. Which is to say, I, I think Careless Talk, I'll have to listen to it again, obviously, this week, but I think Careless Talk does what he's trying to do. I have to look up the lyrics because I can't pull one up in my head. Oh, you'll never guess. Um, a lot of people have recorded songs with that title. <laughs> <laughs> Careless Talk, that's what you heard about me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I will look forward to that. Yeah, me too. Hold on a second. Yeah, and uh, I picked that partly because now Tom has to watch another episode. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Uh, hold on a second. This. Yeah. This what do we got? Oh God. You got a Walter sighting. This is Tinkerbell. Oh, Tinkerbell. 
He's my girl. Yeah, yeah, there you are with your Peter Pan advice. <laughs> <laughs> very She's cute. Girl. She's a very sweetie pie. Yeah. Very, very cute. Yeah. She's an absolute love. She's 12. God bless. Yeah. All right. I think we'll call that an episode. I like it. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. That was episode 24. 24. We did it. <laughs>